Hi, this is Pam, Pam Legropi Art, and today we're going to paint a rooster. This is my truck painting I did a tutorial on recently, and I had a request of how to paint the rooster to put on the truck. So we're going to go ahead and put that on the canvas painting one. This the one I just showed you that had the rooster already was done on my pallet wood board that I uh, have a tutorial on how to create. I do love painting on them. And if you can see here, let me zoom on in for you. Right here is the rooster. So I have this one facing inwards rather than outwards, but that's no matter. You can paint it either direction and make it your own. You could put it down on a pumpkin. You could put it down here in the background. Let me zoom back. You could put it down here beside the truck. I actually have some hens too in that original painting, but we'll stick with the rooster for today. So let's get our paints together. Let me focus this in and get to painting our rooster. So the colors we'll be using today for the rooster is licorice black, yellow ochre, some moon yellow to highlight the yellow ochre. That'd be for the beak and the legs teal in the tail feathers. I wanted the teal to kind of harmonize with the truck. Uh, in my other one I had more of a cobalt blue, but I decided this one I wanted the teal. Linen, you could use a white if you wanted to for some highlights in his feathers, and engine red for his comb and his waddle. So I'm going to get the colors that I need first out on my palette, and then we'll get starting to paint our Rooster. I'm going to use um, probably number 10 flat and uh, for his beak I'll probably come in with a liner or even I could do that with a stylus to give me a little bit more control. So let me get everything set up and we'll get started. Anyways, I'm going to start with a liner and engine red. Because the reds are not opaque opaque I'll have to go over it with a couple coats so I want to get the first one on and it can be drying while we're doing the rest of the rooster. So his waddle on top, or comb I should say, is just a series of bumps on his head. Don't have to be too precise, just paint them in there. Get a good amount of paint so you have some coverage and giving a nice handsome comb and then we'll do his waddle. The waddle's the same, just some bumps here. Now around his eye is also red. So we'll get that done on there. And that's basically those components. So those can start drying. I'm going to rinse out my brush so it doesn't dry in it. And I'll get my number 10 flat. I've got it rinsed out and patted dry. And I'm just going to go in the black. Oops, it's just so close up you're not seeing me do that. Well, I just loaded it with some black. And I'm just going to do the bottom portion up. Here is where his um, neck and what have you is. It's a lighter color, but I'm just going to put his little body in, paint it in with the black. If you need a smaller brush, Feel free to change to a smaller brush. Now you don't have to be perfect, you just want to get his general shape in. Some are skinnier, some are fatter. You'd be surprised at the different shapes of roosters. So then I'm just going to use the chisel edge of my brush, the flat brush, and I'm just going to pull in his tail. Nothing too fancy. You're just going to give them a pretty little tail. Whoops, see I've marked over that too far. Let me get my cotton swab. Be a little more careful than me. And we have just a few little feathers down here. But give them nice tail there. This one can be actually come down a little bit. So we have his tail going on there. 
and we'll add some highlights and detail to that in a bit. So with my liner, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to get now some yellow ochre. I'm going to go ahead and put the legs on. We'll get his legs on. This is just plaid folk art yellow ochre. It's a great kind of a neutral yellow, not too bright. And I'm just going to give them a little bit of feet. And then making sure I have a decent chisel edge on this. Not chisel edge, but point. And very lightly touch in the beak. Now it kind of blends in with this color, so we'll have to come back and put another coat on there and then highlight it a bit with the um, lighter yellow. So I'm going to let this dry because I don't want the next colors to blend in with these wet colors. So I'm going to get my blow dryer and I'm going to give it a good blast, dry it, and then we'll come back and finish up our little rooster. So I'm going to do his upper, his neck or upper body, whatever you want to call it, with burnt umber. I didn't mention that at the beginning because I hadn't decided upon that, but now I'm going to do that with the burnt umber and the number 10 flat. For the majority of it, I'll probably do the liner to get around the more detail work. But I just, with the chisel edge, am going to bring some choppy strokes down. And you see it leaves a little feathery edge there. And this is not completely covering the terracotta color below. But that's all right. We'll come back in with some more color probably some burnt umber first and then the rest. So I'm going to just take this a little bit around the waddle and then I'm going to get my liner to finish going around the rest. Loading my liner and I'm just going to bring a little bit around his face and then up here. And then I'm going to go right into the red. Right into the red. I didn't clean off my brush. Doesn't matter. The burnt umber will give the red some depth of color and probably may not even come off the brush. So, but there we have the second coat of red for the wattle face and comb. So there we have that. I'm going to go into some more yellow ochre. I'm just going to get it out of the lid. I'm not going to use enough to put it actually out on the palette, but I am going to pull my brush into a point on the palette. And let me display that for you. So I've loaded the brush and now I'm just pulling it to a point, making sure I have plenty of paint on there. And I'm going to, I'm going to very carefully paint his beak and then go back and repaint his legs. Get right here, go over that. You see how it just brightened it up so much already? Got a little thick there. I need to probably pull up a little bit with my cotton swab. So there's our next layer on the rooster. So we can give him another coat of black, especially following his tail feathers. And I'm just loading my flat brush with the black, making sure I have a good chisel edge. So pull in the black, make sure it's opaque. I try to follow my feather lines from before. So I just give that some depth of color and not just create new feathers. So I'm not going to go up over that part. I'm just kind of making sure he's got a good opaque color on his body. And the brown still needs to dry. Everything needs to dry before we go to the next step. So let's let him dry. So let's bring some lighter, brighter color into his upper body. So I'm going to double load my brush. This is the number 10 flat. You can use a bit smaller brush if you want. I'm going to get some of the burnt umber some of the linen on my brush and just work it in a bit. Not too much. 
and then I'm going to lead with the lighter, or the darker color, meaning that's going to be in the front of the brush. Got a little bit too much water on the ferrule, and then we're going to just bring it down. We're going to start like half halfway up, and just bring some of this down into the black. We need a little bit more linen, or just reload both colors, and just bring that down so you can see like the feathery feathery tips there. Reload. And I'm just going to do the same up here, but it's like another layer of the feathery strokes. I'm being careful to work around his waddle and face, on his face. And with the choppy strokes, it gives it a little bit of a feathery look. Now I'm going to take that little bit of linen on my brush and I'm going to just bring a little arc and that mimics a, a wing there. If you feel like you got it too much on there, get a little black and just soften it. There, see how it's still there but it's softer and I'll get a little bit more. There we go. So you have the indication of a wing. You get all fancy and do some strokes in there to give it feathery look, but he's not the star of the show. He's just part of the backdrop, or not backdrop, but some of the details on here. So that being said, we can do a little bit of the linen. I just put a little bit of linen on the corner of the brush, and I'm just going to bring in some of that color into his tail feathers. And if you notice, I've been just getting messy. I'm working around the camera, so I can't always see where my brush is landing, but it's all good. So there we've got a little highlight in there, and that will really make the teal stand out when we come to bring it into his tail. So um, you can brighten up or uh, highlight the reds. And let's see. I, a lot of times I use apple red, but I'm going to try this alizarin crimson and to highlight, brighten up his wattle and the red areas. And you see how much brighter it is than that, than the color we put on there. So we just want to get a touch of it on our liner and maybe highlight like the tops. Now at first you may not notice it, so if you think that, oh, it's just not showing up, don't worry about it. It will as it dries. And if at any time you think this red, the other red needs to be brightened up a little bit, go into the engine red. You don't need a lot, so I'm just going to put my brush there, brush it onto my palette a little bit, and just bring that red in. May have had a little bit too much of that burnt umber with it, so it kind of dulled it when we want his wattle, etc., to be bright. So there we have that all taken care of. And as soon as that linen dries, we're going to put some of the teal in there. So I'm just looking at it. I get a little impatient. I should just let it dry. And I could put a little teal in his um, neck feathers too, just a touch. So I'm just getting a touch of teal in my flat brush and just barely stroking some teal in there just to give a touch of color. You see how that's just blending in, giving his tail some oomph. Now, like I said, in my other one I did the cobalt blue and that worked wonderfully. And at any time you want to add a touch more black just to get that blending in. Do so. I got a little touch too much water in my brush. So watch that, but it's, it's okay. I'm going into a little bit of the linen again. Like I said, too much water. I can feel it in my brush.
So now we go in, and I'm going to highlight his beak. So I'm going to use the moon yellow for that. And I'm just going to put a tiny line of yellow. And if you need a, a smaller liner brush, feel free to do that. But I'm just going to put a bright line along the top of his beak and a moon yellow on the one, the right side of his legs to give it a little oomph. And then for the eye, I'm going to, though my block's kind of gotten thick here, I went and had lunch, so it's been sitting here on my palette. But I make sure I have a, just a tiny dot and I dot his eye. And there you have Mr. Rooster. We might need to lighten his beak just a touch more because it's just not standing out. And um, I think I'm looking for I am I'm looking for my daffodil yellow. So we want that to stand out. And I think I got that dot. I was I was worried about that. I should have used a stylus. I got a little too much, too big of an eye on the poor guy. But there we go. Give him a beak that's noticeable. And let me see if I can touch up that eye. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go into my engine red, wherever I put it, right there. So aren't you glad I show you when I make mistakes? That way you don't feel so bad when you do. So I'm just gonna go over that as much as I can. And then I will be better at doing the eyeball. I'm going to use a pen. I usually use a stylus and I'm going to dot it off onto my palette to make sure. There we go. Now this is still wet so it may not leave a dark eye. Yeah, so it looks like I'm going to have to wait until it dries. Oh, there we got it. So to have more control, a stylus works really good. Um, I have a ton of them and it just wasn't handy so I cheated. Or even a smaller liner brush like a 01 or ot one liner. And there you have your rooster to put on your truck painting. I hope you enjoyed this video and please check out my truck painting tutorial so you can do the entire truck, fall truck, and be sure and subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when I'm going to do a winter scene. I think I'm going to put snowmen in the back or along the side, but we're going to do a winter truck in the near future. So I hope to see you in the next video and happy painting.